Welcome, uh, I'm, I'm Jack Leslie, I'm chairman of Weber Shanwick, and I thank you all for braving the snow. And joining us for the, for the debut of our, of our new global research, the CEO uh, Reputation Premium Gaining Advantage uh, in the Engagement Era, uh, one in which there's this voracious appetite for uh, storytelling from people and from brands. And so our discussion today is going to explore what engagement means for today's chief executives. There really is a new generation of CEOs emerging. We at Weber Shanwick decided, you know, let's dig back into the world of CEO reputation. You're the reputation of the company. And regardless of, of what you do, people view the company through you. These CEOs, though, have to communicate in a very, very different environment than ever before. It seems that uh, everyone is connected, and everyone seems to interest in what is going on in the world. That is easy to understand that uh, with the personal characteristic uh, leadership style in each of the CEOs playing a very important role. The demand to see and to interview the CEO uh, is much, much higher. There's an unrelenting rise of social media, TV and online channels. There's the old expression that it takes a lifetime to build your reputation and takes a moment to lose it. I think a good apology is when you pivot, when you're able to bracket the negative event that happened and you were able to move on. So if it's a pivot point, it's a, it's a good apology. If it's, if it's just getting you deeper into the conversation, it's not a good apology. CEO reputation matters, and it, ma it matters a lot. It still matters. 45% of a company's reputation is attributable to the CEO. There's an enormous correlation between CEO or, or leadership reputation and corporate reputation. Public engagement, is, it's the new CEO mandate. 81%, that's a really big number, reported that CEOs have to have a visible external profile. There really is a new IT CEO, and that's the quietly engaged CEO. It used to be that the, the, the CEO, the imperial CEO, you would take the stage, you would be everywhere, you would determine what you wanted to do, and you would do it. Leslie talked about humility being the kind of new defining characteristic of CEOs, and yet, are those two things in some ways contradictory? I found this great definition, which is, that humility is having a clear perspective and respect for one's place in context. So it's it's really not being at all shy or behind the scenes. So humble does it it's, mean? It's really b being respectful of the power of others to contribute to your success. Part of the reason that the humble CEO plays so well today is that it does, he, he, she does make an emotional connection with stakeholders. The engaging, humble CEO can choose from a vast portfolio of different platforms in order to communicate their company story. When we look at events, we look at what is the business strategy we're trying to advance? Is the event sort of um, a platform at which we can communicate to important constituents? Are there amplification opportunities at the event? And how do you create that ecosystem around it? So every time we position a CEO or C-suite exec in a conference space, it really is to accomplish something specific for their business. And granted, it is a very powerful communications channel, but it's also how strategic and intentionally you manage every opportunity that's there. Social CEOs come with benefits. We've been uh, studying at Weber Shanley social CEOs since 2010. And in this study, we found that highly regarded CEOs are much more likely to be social than those with lesser regarded reputations. We asked executives who have male CEOs and female CEOs what they thought about in terms of the strength of the company reputation, the strength of the CEO reputation, and also its contribution to market value. And lo and behold, no, very, no differences. That's great news. 